Welcome back, my amazing learners. We're going to continue with part three of Anansi and the Pudding Tree. We're now on page 15. Now, do you remember what happened in parts one and part two? All right, think about it and then listen and enjoy part three of the story. Brother Anansi observed that there was a tiny hole in the traveling basket that Brother Puss took with him wherever he went. As soon as he turned his back, Brother Anansi emptied a parcel of flour into the traveling basket. Brother Puss did not see that the flour was in his basket. Friday morning came. Brother Anansi came out on the road at the break of dawn. He saw a trail of flour on the road. He began to follow the trail. No my awesome and amazing readers would immediately remember this story. Hmm, which story is that? No, it starts with an H, with a little boy and a little girl. Type it in the comments below. If you remember what story has a trail like that trail of flour, but the only thing is that in that story, it was a trail of breadcrumbs. And you had a little boy and a little girl in that story. So type the name of that story in the comments to show me that you're remembering and you're making connections. Let us continue reading. And Nancy thought that brother dog was still asleep. So he was very happy. If he could follow the trail, he would not have any use for brother dog. A few steps further down the road, there was Brother Dog gleefully running to tell Anansi what he observed. Brother Mongrel Dog, said Anansi, don't bother to come. I don't believe that, that this flower leads anywhere. Brother Dog insisted that he would be traveling with Anansi. Anansi had to agree. They followed the flower trail until they came to the exact spot where they had to stop when they, were, where, when they were following the scent. There was no sign of flour. And Nancy and Dog looked at each other in surprise. No flour trail, nor any scent on the road. Bow, wow, exclaimed Brother Dog. I believe that he must have turned off the road into the bushes. Since they are wet with dew, Signs of flour would be very faint, said Anansi. Let us look carefully in the bushes. Brother Anansi was right. They found the flower trail in the bushes. It was barely visible, but with careful observation, they could follow. With careful steps and ears awake, they journeyed on. At a little clearance in the middle of the woods, the flower trail stopped at the root of a tree. Near the tree was a bamboo basket covered with a white towel. There was also the traveling bag of Brother Puss. It seems like the basket has pudding in it, sniffed Brother Dog. Take off the cover, let us see, requested Anansi. Brother Mongrel Dog stepped towards the basket and was about to lift the cover. Don't trouble my things, came a sharp warning from a branch above. They quickly flicked their eyes towards the branch. There was Brother Puss sitting on a branch with the last ripe pudding in his hand. He was staring fiercely at them. Brother Mongrel Dog scoffed at him and proceeded to uncover the basket. Pudding Anansi, let us eat, stated Brother Mongrel Dog. He took one from the basket and was about to bite. Brother Puss sprang from the branch and tried to grab it. Brother Mongrel Dog held him by the tail, took him into the open area and javelined him into the air. He fell far out in the open, soft, grassy area with no injury. He can't survive. I'm sure he's dead, laughed Brother Dog. You would have to fling him nine times for him to die. Puss has nine lives, stated Anansi. Brother Puss knew Brother Mongrel Dog well. He knew that if he ate a bellyful, he would simply lie there at the same place and go to sleep. 
Brother Anansi would also catch a dose. Brother Puss got some prickles and stuck them into his toes as weapons of attack. He was pleased when he saw Anansi and Dog sleeping under the pudding tree. He crept up and was about to attack Brother Mongrel Dog when he suddenly popped open one eye just in time to see Brother Puss aiming to attack. Brother Dog jumped to his feet and with his prickles, Brother Puss tried to fight. He was no match for Brother Mongrel Dog who bit him badly on one arm. Brother Dog was about to bite him again. That's enough punishment. Release him now, begged Anansi. He scratched my face. I'm going to bite him a few more times, blazed Brother Mongrel Dog. No, no, begged Anansi, who was now fully awake. Brother Dog released him. Brother Puss took up his basket and went away crying, Me arm! Me arm! Me arm! Until this day, Puss is still crying, Me arm! Me arm! Me arm! Don't you ever come back to this place. You must thank Brother Anansi for saving your life today. But whenever I meet you from now on, I will bite your tail off, warned Brother Dog. We will never be friends again. All right, so we are going to stop right there for part three. Stay tuned, part four is coming right up. <laughs> <laughs>